So welcome everyone to the to this Teleadvisors webinar. Both of the presenters today have come from the HERDSA 2021 conference program, and uh, the you know one of the reasons why we looked at that as Teleadvisors is to see what's currently happening in the tele space and just to make sure that people's work was. Um, appreciated and had the visibility uh, that it deserves. So I'd like to welcome again uh, Diana Tom Tommy. She has led an exciting life as a freelance woodwind specialist in a multitude of genres, performing in countless interstate and international tours, plus live radio and television broadcasts appearing with many Australian professional orchestras and the acclaimed Malaysian Philharmonic. Diana has traditionally explored chamber music, additionally explored chamber music with her internationally recognised group Collusion, performing Australian new music and dance collaboratives. A recipient of the Churchill Fellowship Award and the Queen Elizabeth Trust Scholarship, more recently Arts Queensland and Australia Council for the Arts, funding has contributed to her international performance activities. Diana is full-time senior lecturer of professional practice at the Queensland Conservatorium Griffith University, passionately teaching and researching performance, pedagogy, musicians' health and vocational preparation. Her teaching excellence has been recognised and awarded an AEL Group Learning and Teaching Citation 2014 are highly commended in the employability within the curriculum category of the Griffith University Awards for Excellence in Teaching and a University Australia Citation for Outstanding Contribution to Student Learning. Currently endorsed by Diario Woodwind, Diana is looking forward to her continued release of solo and chamber music recordings. Welcome, Diana. Great, thank you very much and thanks very much for having me, um, Wendy and Penny and also Amina, that was a lovely um, presentation as well which I gained much from so thank you very much for that. Um, before I get started I'd also like to acknowledge the uh, Jagger and uh, the Jagger and Turbal peoples, the traditional custodians of the land upon which University, Griffith University now stands and recognise that this land has always been a place of knowledge, teaching and learning and above all music of which to learn uh, countless, countless information about the land, sea, sky and cosmos. I pay my respects to Elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people as well. So um, my name is Diana Tolmy. The um, presentation technology is the key students, uh, student musicians engagement with Pebble Pad for authentic professional learning. Um, the comment of technology is the key to probably not to upset a lot of people. I, I too acknowledge that technology is not a standalone um, pedagogical magic bullet. Um, it was actually just a pun on words being music and key and gee that was funny. Um, so I run a bunch of uh, courses at the conservatorium. It's in a strand called My Life as a Musician and these are vocation preparation courses uh, with the idea that students being able to lead sustainable and happy livelihoods as self-managed musicians. Um, and so in one of these, I'll just go to the next slide here, um, they have to basically write a, and a grant, oh goodness that looks terribly horrible doesn't it on, this, on the screen there, but we'll, hopefully my voice will be enough. So the students are required to submit an assessment based on the Ian Potter Cultural Trust grant application and this grant is for the support for further education and mentorship of early career emerging musicians such as those graduating from the Queensland Conservatorium um, and fundraising in particular grant writing is a skill required of all artists seeking to further their employment networks and career sustainability. So yes the students are required to submit an assessment based on the Ian Potter Cultural Trust um, and this grant uh, is ordinarily for the support for further education and mentorship of early career emerging musicians such as those graduating from the conservatorium. Um, so my design approach was basically to replace the word template that I previously created for this assessment and I wanted the students 
um, to experience an authentic assessment that mimicked the Smarty Grants technology that you, you often find um, is experienced when applying for grants like, for example, Arts Queensland, the Impotter Cultural Trust, um, Churchill Fellowship, Australian Council, Council for the Arts, and these are um, very common grants that artists go for. So I integrated the grant questions into the Pebble Pan grant workbook and branded it to look like the Ian Potter Cultural Trust um, grant itself. And so even just sort of just scrolling down, which hopefully the, the screen is actually moving at the moment, that would be very good. But you can basically embed a whole bunch of stuff, um, the information, normally like tips and hints and, um, you know, the criteria, etc. cetera. Um, and then, um, you know, uh, using all the same things, um, you know, some of the tedious same stuff, you know, entering your full name, your postal address, your email address, etc. And basically having a really sort of authentic experience and also a repository uh, for use um, later on. Um, so even these drop downs you can basically use and you know click on uh, what's actually most suited to you and uh, work through uh, all of all of those areas as well. Um, and in particular um, the request details themselves. So most grants will ask the three basic questions as to um, okay, so the screen is not moving, but continue on. Okay, very good, thank you. <laughs> but the, basically, the three questions that one asks is um, provide details of your current arts, arts practice. What um, what is it that you're wanting to um, to do, and how will it actually impact your career and your um, your art form as well? So, in using these drop downs, check boxes, character word limits, um, in particular, um, that's uh, that and and as experienced online particularly when answering graphic questions, um, the strict word limited questions discussing the artist's cre um, creative practice to date, etc., were really, really super useful. Um, and in addition, um, for the income and expense section of the grant, otherwise known as the budget, I designed bespoke Excel spreadsheet to include drop down categories, spell check and automatic totaling and other calculative functions that are experienced in the online real versions as well. Um, largely because I was sick of budgets not balancing where income is actually meant to equal um, uh, expenses and sometimes the student would be out by five dollars and you're almost sort of tempted to just rip five dollars out of your wallet and hand it to the student say look you know, make it balance find the money from somewhere um, and also quite wary of seeing the word accommodation spelled with just one m as opposed to two and it sounds like sort of minuscule details but these can be actually make or break as far as deciding as to who is going to get a grant particularly if you're if you've been inundated with a hundred of these grants and the board is basically trying to figure out which 10 people are going to be the ones um, that uh, that um, are going to get to get the grant so it's incredibly competitive particularly in the arts um, what I might do is um, if it's possible to um, oh yeah penny accommodation with one C and one M so do is I might sort of send out the PowerPoint slides to everyone that's visited today just so you can sort of see the pictures. But what I found really interesting um, that um, I could actually incorporate that uh, Excel budget idea into um, the travel itinerary as well. Um, so uh, you have to submit one of those um, where it's designed to facilitate, you know, where you're going from, where you're going to, the location of the activities, people relevant to the activity. Um, and um, both Excel spreadsheets were originally, I was going to export them as PDFs, but it was actually easier for the students just to keep them as Excel spreadsheets and upload those to the PebblePad grant workbook as well. Um, and so the use of PebblePad was really appropriate because it also has a facility to upload the required supporting documentation that you normally find in grants, such as audio video files, PDFs of support letters, biographies, CV, and personal website screenshots or the actual link themselves. So for this assignment, um, rather than it being just a, a hugely sort of um, big animal. I only just asked them in addition to the, the grant questions that they actually had to upload their biography, their CV, their personal um, website screenshot and sort of later iterations have also set an invoice as well. Um, 
I also embedded a one question survey, which you also actually find in arts grants applications to determine how students found the technological process. Um, and that was actually really useful to sort of understand uh, how they were gauging that um, and also just to compare with their results as well. Um, and also I embedded a check and evaluation section. So, you know, please check to confirm you have completed all the required components of this grant. Um, so the first one, I have read the funding guide guidelines. The second one, I've completed the personal details request over to request details section. I've uploaded my CV, I've inserted my biography, I've uploaded, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that way, if there was something that the student elected not to do, you couldn't really go pointy finger at the technology and go, oh, well, it's a fault of the technology. It's just, well, if that student hasn't checked, for example, their budget, they've actually elected not to upload that budget, which actually was quite useful in the minor occurrences that that did actually happen. Um, so what did this all result into? So in many ways, this, the quality of the students were improved compared to the previous year. And I believe the segmented and visual guiding process of the pebble pad structure assisted this. Um, that visible word count ensured accountability and many more wrote to the word count than previous years. Um, so as opposed to, you know, well above or well below. Um, all the students attempted the assignment. This was for 2019 um, and that's 94 students and which is really different experience previous years and more of the students budget balanced yay and were more researched as those drop downs as to you know what category certain expenses or income was hinted that it actually required a more involved process so they actually found it quite inspiring. Um, the itineraries were also more considered and allowed for a clear understanding of the travel Im implications as well. So again, those drop downs were able to kind of incite a little bit more imagination as to what was required. Um, one student submitted her assignment to me, then immediately used it for a real grant application and was awarded the actual grant, so 2,000 euros for the language course in Slovenia. Um, and what was really cool was that we were able to share this inspiring experience during the course to the class. Um, so overall, the students' course outcomes resulted in many more sixes and sevens than previous years. So there's literally 51% of the cohorts. So um, all the responses were much more mature, deeply considered, engaged. Um, and there was also, fantastically, no complaints about the usability of the technology, despite my current experience with Collaborate today. Um, and the results of the final question re regarding that grant technology were really interesting. So 87 out of 94 answered in the positive regarding the process. Um, those who answered negatively also failed the assignment. Um, whether this is because they were not engaged in the course itself or struggled with the technology, to be honest, I don't know. Um, what written work they did present didn't meet the criteria. However, um, I do know those students and I've encountered them, if not in my own courses, but just sitting on assessment boards, et cetera, and they are students that in general um, probably are not engaged as we would like them to be overall. Um, and so in general, the students actually appreciated the fact that they had um, a repository of place uh, where they could actually keep all this stuff they needed to have that was kind of tedious to do really, but all musicians will say that, and that they can actually use in years to come. Um, uh, from the perspective of marking something like this, um, to be honest, it's no different than my experience with Arts Queensland, where you get hit with, I mean, in this case, this was 94 assignments, but normally you get roughly about 25 to 30 um, assessments, uh, sorry, um, grants that you have to assess, and they're all in sort of small components. Um, so you have to download the CV, download the Excel files, you have to do download those. Um, all the questions are embedded in Pebble Pad, so you see those. But funnily enough, with what Amina was saying, I completely agree with everything she was saying. I use um, a, a a software called ScreenFlow, and I do a screencast of their assessment, mainly because if you would normally submit an assessment, sorry, a grant application, uh, for example, with Arts Queensland, if you don't get it, you would actually normally ring them up and say, um, hello, could I please have some feedback from the grant um, application that I submitted? It was unsuccessful because they have those feedback um, loops. So I just figured, well, I may as well do something that's actually 
active so that they can actually see me actively go through their grant and um, offer advice as to what is strong and what is not necessarily as strong because you can write rubrics as rigorously as possible but they will actually at the end of the day for something like this that is authentic at the end of the day you will get the grant or you won't get the grant so is a seven getting the grant well maybe maybe not is a six getting a grant so it's a seven out of seven six out of seven five out of seven that's our grading system but the richness is more in the commentary of how you've actually gone throughout the whole um, process um, in general so I prefer this process overall because you can actually chop and change between the tabs within Pebble, but unlike Turnitin where you sort of end up having the death scroll experience um, and a bit of extra RSI to a musician that already doesn't need it um, overall. Um, so in general, I was pretty happy with that positive outcome. Um, for 2020, that was basically when uh, COVID hit and the industry went toes up. Um, we still did put the grant application there. The results um, were a little bit different, but I'm quite mindful that we're asking them to write a grant within the context of a dis disrupted industry. Um, so the comparisons, you're, you're really comparing apples to oranges overall. Um, so thanks for listening. That's my presentation. So sorry the technology didn't actually work, but hopefully your imagination helped you along a little bit. Um, any questions? Thanks very much, Diana. Uh, that's gives us a good uh, overview of, of this assessment and as Amina said it's such a great assessment idea. As you mentioned at the end there, uh, doing it in a disrupted industry I think would all make very interesting research and, and write-ups. Um, you know to be, it would be interesting to see the results from your students you know with this different environment that you're that you're talking about um, yeah. I haven't seen any questions outstanding questions in the chat so if anybody has any questions please put them in there or show your and show your appreciation in the chat yeah I that's right. question uh, Deanna thanks thanks Fred. that's really good um, I was just wondering if, if it is difficult to uh, you kind of started talking about this a little bit but um, if it's difficult to kind of align your learning outcomes with the success of the grant, like is, um, is, um, so, for example, is there is there a scenario where you would not get a seven, but you would get the grant? But that you would get the grant? Um, yeah. In real life. Uh, just just as part of this process. Um. Well, I, I'm a bit confused as the question. So um, the seven translates to excellent, six is yeah. very good, yeah. yep, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you got a seven, it was basically that you would be very highly likely to get this grant. Um, and as I explained to the students, you end up submitting this assignment in real life and you don't get the grant, please don't start I guess we'll use the theme of eggs today so don't egg my door um, <laughs> you know office door um, it's it's more of a case that um, uh, it literally the wind was possibly not blowing the right way I've been on panels for grants and it's been a case where people have been knocked back purely because they popped their grant in so early they've gone oh well we'll give this grant to someone else because this person can reapply um, it's a really good grant and often even for myself I've rung up and said oh can you give me some feedback they go no it was terrific just chuck it in again and um, so that's basically the caveat I give the students and just say look it could be actually really watertight and you might not get it and it's just because there's just the competition is just so high. Musicians understand that to be honest um, they're pretty resilient people I mean they have to be but um, they they do get that just sometimes it's just not your um, with the to go from say a six to a seven um, it's uh, more of a case of um, you know you've got a really strong case but there's a few things here that you just need to sort of think about and you know kind of like what Amina was saying just have a think about these questions or put yourself in the in the panel you know these are you've left some questions dangling in the air that, that haven't been answered in that particular grant that they would really like to know about um, or it's a case of it's really good 
but it's um, a little bit vanilla. So, for example, you know, a, a violinist wants to go overseas, do a master's at the Royal Academy of Music in London. Well, that's great, but so do another hundred. Um, so how are you going to actually distinguish yourself from those that violinist? Is there an actual core problem that you can actually sort of solve or is there something specifically unique that you can, in addition, learn while you're over there? And that could be just learning how to use looping pedals and doing something spectacularly funky, aside from a Mozart concho. So, yeah. I hope that answered the question, Hank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, you did. Uh, yeah, no, I, was, I was just kind of wondering if I suppose um, I was wondering if there was any additional criteria that you use um, oh. in terms of them going through the um, process of putting in a grant, uh, rather than just the grant criteria. If you know what I mean. Oh yeah, as in what my rubric is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, yep, I've actually funnily enough been working on that again this morning. Um, I'll just bring up what that criteria is. And that's gone, there we go. Um, so basically, uh, the first criteria is demonstrate your learned knowledge of appropriate self-promotion and strengths-based writing strategies, um, and that ties in with their CV, bio, um, etc. Um, the second one is produce a grant application that meets the grant criteria itself. So it's kind of like a criteria embedded within a criteria, I suppose. Um, the next one is to communicate your proposal to a grant funding panel. Um, so in other words, how you're putting yourselves or empathising that grumpy person that's late at night probably drinking a bit too much red wine and actually seriously regretting saying yes to um, assessing your grant um, and that's not me by the way um, and then number four is um, research and justify all aspects of the proposal so how in depth did you actually sort of research um, your idea because I also use this grant as application as what I call a hidden curriculum of career development slash planning because again, it's like, well, where are you out at now? What do you want to do and how's it going to impact? So that has all sort of embedded concepts of values, journey, planning, how you're going to um, improve yourself, lifelong learning, learning and all those things as well. And that needs research. Um, and I'm a big sort of um, uh, advocate for learning how the, the skills of opportunity research. So working out not just what would be cool to do now, but where it could possibly lead to. Uh, thanks. Thank you. thanks, Diana, for sharing those uh, details of the rubric. That's great. So, yes, if that's all that we have today, uh, just with the two presenters, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording now.